All right. Welcome everybody to this episode of Pop Speakers. Now, today I've got a very, very special guest. Uh, we've got Rich Bontrigger, or as he has known uh, online, Rich Trigger Bontrigger. He is nowadays a leadership slash speaking coach, and he's very special. He's unique. He has more than 25 years now of experience as a keynote speaker and storyteller. He is also a professional broadcaster and super cool, a church planter assessor. He also has very, very fascinating and also scary life events like uh, going through a liver transplant, surviving a fire accident as a kid, and such so many more things uh, like working in a comic book store. <laughs> it's a very interesting person. So welcome, Rich. It's really nice to have you on, um, on this podcast and this episode here today. And I'm really excited to talk with you about public speaking and how we can make it better, especially now in this time during the coronavirus where we are online and where we are stuck to our laptops and computers. Well, thank you for having me on. I love being on these type of shows. I love being on sharing, uh, taking my broadcasting career, as you talked about, and bringing that together with the virtual world that we're all now having to jump onto. It's not that we want to. A lot of people are now being forced to. And the biggest question I often hear, number one, is what do I do with this? So I'm having a blast going on shows like this and helping people (laughs) out to uh, really rock the stage better. Right, right. And you've been doing it since... A long time since you've been broadcasting with doing it virtually. So for the Yeah, three, um, actually, years. I've been a broadcaster for 30 years now. That bio is outdated, which is great. Uh, <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. Uh, I've been in radio. I've done some TV, but a lot of it now, the streaming uh, age started to come about. The podcasting age started to pop up. And so a right. lot of the stuff from radio started to drop onto the Internet. And we were streaming all of our football, basketball games that way. All my interview shows started to be streaming. So I started to learn about this before it became the big thing that it is now. Uh, So thankfully, I've got a leg up on it, and I just want to help people do better and better uh, because I don't think the stage is going away. The live stage will come back, but I think the virtual stage is here to stay. Right, right. And we see it, for for example, me, myself, and many of my listeners – um, we, we, we discussed it right now, our Toastmaster members. And most Toastmaster meetings around the world are being done online, which is super cool because it connects people. It, I can attend meetings in Hong Kong today. And at the same time, later in the day, I can go to the US and attend meetings there. But it's all on Zoom. And what I notice a lot with inexperienced people, also like myself, um, is when we use Zoom meetings, many things go not so smooth. Uh, For example, the microphone, the internet connection, um, we don't look into the camera, et cetera, et cetera. So what would you say from your expertise, your experience, what what are, if if somebody wants to start with giving presentations or public There there is so much and and that's a great setup because there are so many things spinning around now that are so different. First of all, the live audience used to feed you. Um, if, if you've been on any live stage, you play off the crowd, you play off their body language, you play off their laughter. Um, it's different because I tell people now, everyone's in the front row. There, there, there are no back seats on these Zoom calls anymore. Everyone's like front and center. You see their face. You see if they're on their phone. You see if they're playing with their kid. You right. see if their wife walks through the background. Uh, you, you see things that you would never see before. So there's a different way now of presenting because you have to bring the same energy. Uh, one of the biggest things about this is people are shrinking smaller because the camera box is smaller. It's actually a very big stage if you bring it like a real stage. And that's the biggest thing. Treat this like a real stage, not like you're sitting at your desk. So the number one tip, the number one tip is if you're presenting, stand up and present like you would stand up in a live arena. Get out of your desk and use your body like you would in a normal presentation. Right, right. I love that because I'm sitting right now. I actually feel like if I was standing up, automatically I'm more in a speaker mode. Right, right. What what do you think about, because the camera can only grab so much of my body, the upper part, when when I stand up, when I do the body language, how can I fit that to Zoom meetings? So that well, become... Well, one of the thing is, is you can step back. Um, Get a lapel mic, get them with those over-the-ear mics, make it so you're more hands-free wireless. Right now, I'm using my broadcast studio mic because I'm used to doing that. Uh, But I do have other material that I can go all the way back 
can step up like a real stage and then I'm free to use my full body. You can go all the way down to the waist. That's usually what people want. And yeah. so you get a full body versus uh, this headshot thing. Uh, the other th thing is that most people are doing this, honestly, is their head is barely on camera and they're talking like this and they think it's really, no, you, you need to at least get from waist up on camera. So pull back from the chair a little bit, bring your mic back with you. Or mm -hmm. if you can stand up, stand up and really use it. So 70% of our communication is body language. Yeah. But when we're on these Zoom calls, like you just said, you're like a little puppet with your arms and there's no body language. It makes it a lot tougher. Right, right. Yeah. 70%. I, I remember that you, you posted it on the LinkedIn. Uh, yes. recently. Was it 70% body language? Uh, tonality was, uh, how much was it? I don't remember exactly. Well, like verbal communication is one way, but the body language is 70%. We hear, see, sense. We communicate from the way we stand, the way we fold our arms, the way we look at people. There's so many different body cues that we pick up. Are they engaged or not engaged? When you're all sitting at a desk, one of the biggest struggles early on through COVID was you cannot tell who's checked in, who's checked out. These are all sitting at their desk. And the more people are now getting up and interacting, the more people are seeing, oh, Steve is checked in. Susie's completely checked out because you're reading the room differently now. But for a while, you could not tell who was really in with you and who was not. Right. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that you also said about standing up and acting like it is a stage, treating it like a stage. One of the things that I, I have as a question when I think about that is that most people behind the laptop, it's harder to reach them, right? Than in a live stage because it's, it's just not the same connection. So it, how can I, when I stand up, how, how should I adjust my energy level um, or my behavior yeah. to, to get that connection like I would in a live audience? First of all, I always ask people, what do you do before you go on stage? If you're going on the real, uh, to a real stage, what do you do to get yourself amped up? I know people that slam Red Bulls just to get all amped up. I know people that put on their headphones like the athletes, and right. they're rocking to their favorite songs. They're getting in this mood. I do that. I actually jam up my music really good before I go on any show. So I'm already powered up, and then you bring that on to the stage. So the first thing of any stage, whether it's live or virtual, you need to own the stage you step up on. Mm -hmm. And I coach this all the time. You need to step out, look to the crowd. You need to play to them right away and own the stage. We're on these Zoom calls. We're turning them on. We're fumbling on the settings. We're not prepared. If you're using green screen, it's not the right green screen. There's just so much that's not stage ready. So when you're going to be stage ready, step up and own the stage right away. And then, then that makes it more engaging. The crowd right away is grabbed by you because you're grabbing the crowd. Mm, yes, right. And in terms of engaging with the crowd, uh, within live audiences, it's sometimes easy to, to just, um, if you, for example, if I make a joke, right, the, the worst thing on Zoom is when people have their camera shut off and I'm making a joke and all, everybody's muted and I don't hear anything. I don't know if they got it, if, if it's funny. Right. That's, that's one of the worst. Is there, is there some way we can, we can, shut that off that fear or that problem and make it like a more like a live audience or is it just yeah actually there's there's some new creative things coming out so on zoom there are little icons you can go down and you can activate the hand clap the hand wave so if something does something really cool you train your audience to participate that way give me a thumbs up if you like that point thumbs up hey if you really like that idea give me a high five now, this is one that I've used now that I've stole it from somebody else or they did it on my show. So, but if you put your hands up right now, just put them up in the air with me. Now, put, put your hands up to the side and flap them. Now, if you were in one of those Zoom calls that looks like the Brady Bunch with all the little different boxes, you would be slapping hands with their neighbor next to you. Oh, And yeah, the people right. down below you, you could slap hands with the people down below you and, and you know, they could go up. So as you play the audience, you figure out interactive techniques to engage them like that. Like, hey, that was really cool, guys. Let's all get a high five for Steve. Steve <laughs> really rocked this seminar today. And everyone gives Steve a high five, and you're virtually slapping hands around the world. When <laughs> I've done that now, people have been laughing. They're smiling. It's, and I get all sorts of replies. That's the coolest thing to turn it into interactive. Um, there's also a way to use people's names now. When you're in a live audience, you cannot use names. 
Right. And you can pick out the guy in the red shirt, the lady with the blonde hair in the back, and you could do that. But you can actually look at their names and you can say, hey, Steve, what do you think of that? And now you're engaging Steve one-on-one. -on -one. You're pulling them into your conversation. It's not a monologue. It's an interaction. So there's, there's, there's things like that that you can do uh, to engage people. You can also use slides. You can use videos. So you can mm -hmm. integrate things because your PowerPoint used to be up on the wall. And people would look at the wall. You can actually bring it into this, talk over the very thing, and they will see it full screen. And then you go back to you being on camera. That's where the broadcast technique comes in. Broadcast has been doing this for years. We mm -hmm. now get to do it on all of our interactive calls. I see, I see. Wow, that's cool. What kind of tools, apart from the, the, the background? These, by the way, I love this clapping technique. I will definitely use it uh, in one of the Toastmaster events. So, I, people, I mean, I, I laughed when you just said that. I didn't realize what, what this was about in the beginning, but right. we were creative. And yeah, and, and, and that's kind of the way you teach it. You, you, you don't tell them what they're doing. I mean, that, that breaks it. You just get people to participate. You coach them. And as you coach them, they'll start looking around on their Zoom call and see these people. It looks really silly, but it also makes it fun and interactive. So part of us needs to coach people. We need to teach people, but don't spoil it. It's like taking the gag line away from a good joke. Mm. Don't tell them. Take them through it, and the joke becomes, look how silly and crazy, but how cool it is. And people like that. Awesome, awesome. So engaging the audience actually is different, but it's not harder. It's just a little bit different, and we can do it yeah. in very creative ways. I love that. Um, do you have any advice for somebody who, like me, I don't have my, my setup. I don't have a microphone. I don't have a green screen yet. Um, but I don't want to invest like $1,000 just in a maybe low budget, like 100, 200. Um, what, what are the things that you say are the most important to get to, to be, to build that connection, to get everything clear? There's probably four basic tools. One of them is kind of a bonus, but number one, you want a good camera. Now, most laptops, you can grab your iPhone. Uh, most of the current iPhones have a really great camera, high definition. So you can use this and use it with a Zoom call. Now, it does have limitations that a laptop or a tower does not have, but you can use this very effectively. Um, also, uh, your laptop camera will work just fine, but if you go order a USB high-definition camera that's got like 10, uh, 1080 for the way that it pulls the pictures, they're really not that expensive. They've come way down. You can get a 1080 high-definition camera. I, I just upgraded recently myself to a nice mid-level one between $50 and $100. Oh, wow. And they also have a built-in microphone if you want to go that or out, so it increases your microphone. Mm. They're high definition. A lot of them have the wide angle ability. So again, I can go back and it's going to catch everything. Um, so, and they clip on, they go USB and they're very adjustable and they're portable. So you can also get attachments to go to your phone, whatever. So that's mm -hmm. a great upgrade. Uh, as a broadcaster, my microphone is my living. I have been living in front of a microphone for over 30 years. I have to have a good mic. Now, this one um, is a strong condenser mic. It's very directional. Uh, it's got the boom arm, but there's some that you can put on a stand. Again, you get the lapel mic. You get the over-the-ear mic. Now, those are wireless packs, so they're going to be a little bit more expensive. But if you want to stage perform, you can go that way. Mm -hmm. But if you want to get off your laptop microphone, those are not made to be professional. Uh, they're good, but you usually have a tinny sound. You have that backroom echo gets in there. It captures yeah. more of the room. Uh, this really isolates and changes your voice so much to your true voice. Um, the third thing would be get a good light. Uh, I'm using a ring light right now, uh, if, but the, the cheap way around this, the really easiest way around lighting is if you can sit in front of a window, natural oh light is the best thing for on camera. So if you don't want to spend the money on a light, you don't have to open up the shades, sit in front of it and put your camera. So your face in the window and you'll get a natural glow that the camera will pick up. Right. Otherwise these ring lights are really great. They're inexpensive. Again, uh, this one has multiple settings for different colors, different hues, brightness. So I can adjust this to the room that I'm in. And then of course the final thing would be a green screen. If, if you want to go virtual, if you want to change your atmosphere, I, I, I coach people on creating an environment. So back to our words, our descriptions, our emotions, mm -hmm. the environment that you are on communicates. 
Does it look like you're in your garage, but you want to look professional? And does it look like I actually had a guy that was in his man cave and his, the big air conditioning conduit was going right over his head? Now, for our conversation, that worked. We were talking about men being men and having a good time. If you're in a business executive setting, you right. do not want the pipe over your head. Mm -hmm. The virtual screens allow you to literally be anywhere, create your environment, it helps communicate a vibe. Um, so those are probably the four biggest things to start with. Amazing, amazing. So I got it. Um, just for the listeners to, to resume it again. So camera, good camera. Um, then a, a good lighting, right? Good yep. microphone, sound, and a green screen. Right. At these four things. Right. Yep. And that coupled with new methods to engage the audience, like be, being creative, uh, standing up, treating it like an actual stage, um, having the energy levels that we would have on a normal level as well. Engaging the audience, right? Um, anything else? Any any other things that people would would like to have would be a, a, a kind of like a hack cheat code which you can, <laughs> you can use in Z, Zoom meetings. Well, if you're doing Zoom meetings, Zoom is upgrading so fast right now. They yeah. are doing the security upgrades. If you're going to be a host, if you're going to do a podcast or webinar, you need to upgrade. You need to stay on top of this. I've mm -hmm. run meetings where the upgrade happened literally a half hour before my show and people had problems getting in because they didn't upgrade i upgraded so yeah. one thing i tell people is you need to inform your audience mm -hmm. so when you send out your request for your show you want people to come jump on board and be in the audience what you want to do is you want to remind them update sign in early and with zoom they're going to what's called the waiting room the first show i did uh post corona they had just instituted the, the waiting room they didn't quite tell everybody what this was. So half my crowd was in a waiting room, the very first show I was doing. And I had no idea, but I had all these little things popping up. And right. I had to enter them one by one to let them in. Mm -hmm. There's a way now that if you know the list and if you can see the list, you can bring them all in at one time. Mm -hmm. But you need to know your security settings because you don't want to have a great event. Think that no one's really there, but they really are there, but they can't get in. Uh, it loses credibility. It affects your show that you're going to do. So as a virtual person, you need to stay up on the virtual world, read articles, read blogs, uh, keep track of Zoom. Uh, it's really important because we have technical errors on live stage all the time. I've had microphones, I've had video screens dying me. Mm. You have to be ready to adjust on the virtual stage really fast just as well. Right, right. Yeah, now that you mention it, this, this happened to me as well. I, want, uh, I, went to do, I wanted to do a presentation online. But I didn't know how to share my screen at that time. And it was, I, I prepared the presentation, but I didn't think about how can I share it. I, I don't know why I didn't think about it, but on the spot, I was like, oh, can somebody actually tell me how it is? And then it was like 10 minutes back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> so yes, know, 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 know the platform. Master yeah. Zoom. Master Zoom. Especially. And less is more right now. One of the mysterious things that have happened on this whole thing is uh, you can go really slick and really polished. Mm -hmm. But because of intimacy and people want to build relationships, sometimes it's being stripped down like the uh, acoustic band sets that uh, artists are doing. Just simply unplug. There's something intimate. Uh, one of my favorite rock groups is Styx. Tommy Shaw during COVID was inviting you into his home in his pajamas with a guitar singing to his wife some of his biggest hits. We're in his living room. It's very intimate. You can create that same thing. Sometimes you want to change it up, change your environment, make it more intimate by just stripping it down and saying, hi, folks, here we are, and keep it simple. Don't, you don't have to do all the bells and whistles, especially if you're not ready to do them yet. Just do what you do really well, really sharp, and it will pay off. Mm, right, right. Creating that intimacy. Yeah, it doesn't have to be too, too many gadgets and stuff, right? No. Just down to ass. Okay, I love that. Well, I think for, for myself, it is already a lot to do on my checklist. <laughs> um, I think that the rest is going to be, I've, I've seen people who even buy extra gadgets where they can have Zoom shortcuts. Um, yeah. So I see that there's many more things. But I think uh, for, for the audience listening to this, or actually most professional speakers, even for what they need, really, I think, good mic. I'm going to do this. So guys, everybody listening to this, the last time you'll hear me without a microphone <laughs> um, should be arriving tomorrow. And um, 
right. I think most of the things we discussed. Uh, one other question, one last question, which um, I'm curious about is, do you ask your audience to open the camera or are you fine with what they do? I really encourage people to open the camera. That's where the intimacy, that's where the engagement happens. Uh, people are afraid of it. Uh, cyber attacks happen, things happen. But overall, Zoom's high security. Overall, people really want to interact. They want to see the face. Um, mm -hmm. And it's part of getting to know people. If you, if you want to be a speaker, if you want to be in Toastmasters, if you want to get on the stage, you have to get over the fear of who you are and what you are, and you need to engage. So I'm actually in the Zoom meetings with other speakers, other leaders. I turn on my camera because they want to know who Rich is. They want to know if this trigger guy has anything good or bad. And the same thing for everyone else in your audience. Right. It's part of breaking the ice and building that new community. Because as you said during the introduction, this is global. Um, I've been in Germany. I've been in Kazakhstan on meetings. I've been in Hawaii on meetings. Yeah. The cool thing is you get to meet people all over the world. Take off the camera lens, turn on your picture, and be a part of what's going on because it's really powerful if it does become personal and it expands your network yeah. globally. Now you are on global stage. You could never have this before. So enjoy it. That's right. Yeah. Cause it's not gonna, it's not gonna last like it's right now. Most of the things will go back to normal or at least part of it eventually. Part but of it. right now it's really easy to meet people online. So it's a, it's a great opportunity. And if we're stuck in this, then why not master it? Right. <laughs> exactly. But I don't think it's going away. The live yeah. stage will come back, but every uh, e event producer that I've talked to has said there will be a virtual element now. Yeah. So if you're not the big rock stars that get $5,000 per, per speaking gig or $10,000, they will always get the f live stage crowd. Mm -hmm. What you will get now is the invite. Will you be one of our virtual speakers? You'll get yeah. on the screen. You might attend the conference itself, be mm -hmm. in the crowd and still be virtual. Then you can do a breakout session. Then you can do one of those interactive Q and A's. You can do a breakout seminar that can also go live. It can be live with your studio audience. There's so many different ways to do this. So mm. the virtual stage is now a part of the speaking world. It's not going to disappear. Uh, so it is one of those things you have to learn now. Uh, to advance your career, you have to do the live stage and you have to do the video stage. And they're really one and the same. Mm -hmm. You just have to learn how to play to the camera. Welcome to the broadcast world, everybody. You are now a broadcaster and you're on camera going around the world. I love that. that, that that's a perfect uh, outro for our, for our episode today. So is, is there any way that my listeners can reach you? If they're more interested in finding out how they can learn from you. I know you have a YouTube channel. Uh, I know you are on LinkedIn. Yes. Um, or email as well. So what, what is the best way for people if they want to reach out to you? Yeah, really the best way would be LinkedIn is really easy. I'm using LinkedIn all the time. That's how we connected. Right. Uh, we're on there all the time. It's one of the best business platforms right now. Um, you can send me a direct email and I will send you a free booklet about how to rock the virtual stage. This gives you tips, links, insights to some of the things we talked about here today. Absolutely free. Just send it to rich at richbontrager.net. It'll come directly to me, not to an assistant or anything like that. And I will send you this directly back absolutely for free. And it will help you rock the stage even better. It's a great resource. Uh, so that's kind of my gift to your people here today. Oh, and amen to that. <laughs> that's amazing. Okay, thank you so much, um, Rich. It was, it was very insightful. It was a pleasure. And thank you for taking your time and showing us your, your insights, your tricks on how to rock the virtual stage. Thanks for having me on. I love being here today. Thanks again. Thank you a lot, Rich. All right.